Let's review a little bit of what we know about exponents. So if I were to have 3 to the second power times 3 to the third power times 3 to the third power, what does that equal? Well, we could expand it out just as a review. 3 to the second power, well, that's going to be 3 times 3. 3 times 3, and then 3 to the third power, and we're going to multiply it by 3 to the third power. 3 to the third power is going to be 3 times 3 times 3. So what is this going to be equal to? Well, this is going to be equal to 3 to the 2 plus 3 power. 3 to the 2 plus 3 power. 2 to the three, 2 plus 3 power. And this comes straight out of what an exponent is. This is, we're taking two 3's and multiplying it together, and then we're going to multiply that with three 3's being multiplied together. So you're going to end up with 2 plus 3, or 5 3's being multiplied together. So this, of course, is going to be equal to, this, of course, is going to be equal to 3 to the fifth power. 3 to the, 3 to the fifth power. And that's a little bit of a review. This is one of the, the core exponent properties. If you have the same base multiplied to exponents, and you're taking the product of those two expressions, you can essentially, or you do, just add the exponents. 3 to some exponent times 3 to some other exponent is going to be 3 to the sum of those two exponents. So that's kind of interesting. But now let's use this property right over here to try to think about what a negative exponent should be. So we're going to try to think about what should, what should 3 to the negative, let's just say 3 to the negative 2 power, what should this be equal to? And I encourage you to pause this video and think about it. Think about what should this be equal to if we want this property to hold, that if you have the same base raised to different exponents, that you can just take the sum, uh, and you're taking the product of those two expressions, that you can take that base to the sum of those two exponents. Well, let's try a little experiment here. Let's try a little experiment. What should 3 squared, 3 squared times 3 times 3 to the negative 2 power b. What should this be equal to? Well, if we want to keep this property going, this should be equal to 3 to the 2 to the 2 plus negative 2 power, 2 plus negative 2, which of course would be equal to which would be equal to 3 to the 0th power, 3 to the 0th power. And any non-zero number to the zeroth power is going to be equal to 1. So this should be equal to 1. So we should define 3 to the negative 2 in some way so that 3 squared times 3 to the negative 2 should be equal to 1. We need to do that if we want this property to hold, if we want this property to hold right over there. So let's just think about what 3 to the negative 2 should actually be. So we want this to equal 1. Let me copy and paste that so that we can we can manipulate it a little bit algebraically. So let me copy and let me paste it. All right, so we have that on one side. We want that, we want that to be equal to 1. And let me clean this up a little bit. We want that to be equal to 1. So to define 3 to the negative 2, or to think about what 3 to the negative 2 should be, let's divide both sides by 3 squared. Let's divide both sides by that. So let me copy that. Let me, so we're going to divide this side by that, and we're going to divide this side by that. And let me draw a line so that you know that we're dividing. So we're going to divide the left hand by that and the right hand by that. Well, 3 squared over 3 squared, those cancel out. And now we get a really interesting result. We get that 3 to the negative 2 power, 3 to the negative 2 power should be equal to 1 should be equal to 1 over 3 to the second power. 1 over 3 to the second power. And I really want you to internalize this right over here. You have something to the negative power, to the negative 2 power in this case, that's equal to 1 over 3 to the positive version of that exponent. And this is true in general. In the next video, we'll use this, a very similar argument to prove this 
for, for any non-zero base and any exponent that raising it to the negative is going to be, should be, if you want this exponent property to hold, that you would add the exponents when you ha- we're taking the product of the same base raised to different exponents. If you want that property to hold, when you raise something to the negative exponent, it should be one over that base raised to the positive version of that exponent. So three to the negative two power is one over three squared, which is equal to one over nine.